Ariana and Annie, will they think of maybe a top lane or a Shivana is going to be the focus of the first pick. And that was so instrumental. In fact, winning that first game, it really was because you saw Sinai constantly jungling, or counter jungling, sorry, tricks, and he could not get in the game. He just didn't know what to do. Once he lost his jungle, he started investing in wards. But once that starts happening, it's a downward spiral. He couldn't get the money he needed for items. He needs a lot better protection here if they want to be able to keep him in the game. He can't just depend on, you know, camping other lanes. And Sinai, he's going to be going for something like that again. And CLG, they have to stop it. Oh, wow. oh Fiona well, first. there it is. There's the answer. We are going to see Aframu once again on. Leona, and it worked very well. Hand taking the Oriana. What counter would you go with on this one? There's been a number of people claiming different things against Oriana. Ziggs was one of them, and Fnatic banned it out. I don't. I, I want to say Ari, maybe? I expect I played a well, lot of Ari. Ari, Ari but... used to be the traditional, wasn't it? The, yeah. Oriana gets picked, she, you go Ari. Ari gets picked, you go Oriana. And she was different in patch 313, where her charm would land and do an extra 20% yeah. damage with spells after that. I'm thinking that might be what they want to go, or maybe they want to lock down their AD carry since they know they're already going up against Le uh, Leona and take that away from double lift. Well, they do see potentially Thresh coming out, and he is available, but I think they I want think to any. not switch the lanes at this time. 2v1 Wait, didn't if... work out so successfully this time around. Oh, really? As I say, if they're going to pick up oh, Thresh, they might want to take... I mean, Zyra Ash was available again. Like, it worked so well in game one. Didn't go for it this time around. Interesting. So it's kind of funny because Yellowstar was like the main man playing Corky mm -hmm. back when he was doing AD carries. So he knows exactly how he works, but really surprised to see that. But then again, you can't obviously jump away. You do a lot of magic damage early on, actually throughout the entire game. But Dublin, what do you want to go up against that? He has Leona who can be very aggressive. He could go for Lucian again, who did fairly well. You have a you know, great poke with it. But you can tell both teams take this very seriously. I mean, one to one here, and the winner goes on to play Gambit. Mm. That is Which no itself, easy feat for itself. I mean, it's a scary gambit we've seen so far. And they're laughing and joking, smiling. A happy gambit is a scary gambit sometimes. But this right now is all about who will face them. Can COG keep America in it? And really reignite the COG flag as well, because they've been lacking in uh, trophies for some time, honestly, yeah. since the lineups changed around. And they didn't even make it through to Worlds this year around, which was uh, a bit of a sad times. But... Twisted Fate being hovered over right now. Jarvan and Lucian. Lucian, well, 905 says it all really for double lift on Lucian. And he can. He Jinx can be, was available, by the way, yeah. as well. Didn't go for Jinx. Aatrox as a champion of ah. Cyanide ran heavily. So this actually could. Oh, wow. I mean, it who could, could be, be a where? top lane? This could be a top lane. This could be Soas as well. Hmm. Nice. This is. Aatrox has become one of those, those things you can pick that you don't know where it's going to go if you pick it early on. Same thing with Shivana. Like, you don't know if it's going to be the jungle 100%. You don't know if it's going to be top lane, but you know it's going to be a nuisance no matter what. But this kind of comp, I mean, mm. you have two people who are going to dive in. I don't know. I mean, the Twist of Fate's not bad, but you're going to struggle a little bit because there's such a tanky and such a heavy CC team with that Jarvan, with that Leona, and with that Orianna that it might not fa Oh! Mm. I'm happy. Yeah. The Orianna was changed around for this patch, too. Right, okay. So her uh, her W does tick twice as fast. Doesn't reduce magic damage, though, or magic resist, though. And her auto attack uh, animation was fixed a little bit, so it's a little bit easier to do that. But, whew, I mean, so they're kind of really counting on, well, assuming that uh, Sunide will be on the Aatrox to go in, slow him down, and then have Morgana Black Shield herself, and then kind of just keep them all there with that ultimate. Or even, you know, Black Shield uh, Breckless, so he can not get stunned out at all. Well, it's going to be... Interesting to see how it works out for him. He's a definitely a farmer. Good lord, you, you're trying to <laughs> troll me again. Aframu, stop it. It is going to be a Lee Sin. That's going to be Trix pulling out the Lee Sin. So, where will Aatrox go? Will it be Cyanide? Cyanide played an amazing Aatrox during Worlds, so I wouldn't be surprised if it sticks on him. I don't like Fnatic's comp for a couple of reasons. The Thresh against Lucian is not a great pickup because uh, Lucian can get out of Thresh's uh, mm -hmm. ultimate really quickly, get out of the slow. Because you're depending on Thresh to get in there, use the box around the team, and that way they can't really escape the Morgana ultimate that easily. But when you have a Lucian, you have a Leona who can get, you know, can bypass it. You have a Jarvan who can Cataclysm Morgana away, keep her away from the fight, or a kick away. It's really hard for Fnatic to go for an engage here. Like, if they're going to win, they have to do it early, and they have to keep the momentum going, or CLG, I think, can easily well, win this. One thing's for sure, they have a lot of all-in. I mean, Shivana can jump in there. Aatrox is going to jump in there, balance you. Morgana got to jump in there to use the ulti. Everybody else, you expect Pe Reckless to probably stay at range like every AD carry should. And could also see Thresh diving in there as well. That, yeah, that's the thing, is that how is Morgana going to get set up for the fights? Mm. And in my head, it's just Aatrox. Thresh. 
But it's Thresh or Aatrox, because you need Aatrox to maybe bounce them up and then do the slow, allowing Thresh to get the hook mm -hmm. in there and then box them. But if none of that lands, or if it's not synergized perfectly, Morgana won't be able to get there and get an effective ultimate, because she's like a one-trick pony. Once your ulti's down, that's basically it. Well, let's look at look, CLG. I mean, what have they got to counter with? They got, they got a lot of all in. We saw how Leona was uh, for Afro Moo in the last game. We saw how double if was on Lucian. Link on Orianna. Well, obviously back that up with if you land that solar flare, you're pretty much not going to escape. That's mm -hmm. for damn sure. Um, Jarvan in there as well. That's a good all in. Lee Sin in there. It's Nien actually, by the way, on Lee Sin, I should, should point out. This is a top lane Lee Sin, which is going to be interesting in itself. See, I'm actually thinking that CLG won't try to all in a fight. If anything, Maybe use that Leona defensively, unless you catch him off guard with the ultimate. Because if you use her defensively, you can keep one or two people away from your AD carry. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is the semi-finals of the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. It is Counter Logic Gaming playing as the red team and Fnatic right there as the blue team. What will we see? Will we see level one action? Not too sure. We haven't seen a great deal. So far, it's, it's kind of hard, uh, especially when it gets an Oriana like this. I mean, Fnatic to have a good comp for, uh, comp for it, where you could go for a knockup and then we're gonna bind, even a hook. But when you have an Oriana ball to check every bush, it's kind of, it's kind of impossible unless the other team makes a big mistake. Ooh. Is he going to throw the kick out? Is he just going to get caught out? No, he's just going to walk straight in a face check. Is it going to be enough? They do get the knock up. So has gone oh, in the flash. Oh, oh, comes out from Yellowstar. First blood, Reckless. Wow, Yellowstar, that was an amazing flash coming out right there, locking it down before he could even escape. And that was the mistake I was talking about. I mean, there's no way they should be able to get caught unless Nian so face checks a bush, gets hooked, and gets killed. Exact, <laughs> exact, exact, what exact I same position. Cloud9 got caught out on in the World Finals. What? Why? Why? Why are they doing this? Reckless goes back, gets himself a longsword. That is first blood, and that is going to hurt in lane. <laughs> and Dubless like, well, make sure to make my job a little bit harder, guys, as he's going to have to go up against that. Unless they do pull a lane swap, but... Wow, I mean, just fantastic coordination, fantastic knowledge by Yellowstar to realize I can make it in time. I can get this grab. But right now, Fnatic, I mean, that one kill, that's not enough to win the game. They still have a long road ahead of them if they want to be able to pull this one off, as well as CLG here. We already see a couple of wards coming in, and it looks like CLG do have an understanding of where Fnatic is in terms of that red buff. Wow. Un unbelievable for me. CLG starting off on the red buff. They're going to make sure that gets secured. Are they going to give it to Nien for that top lane, or will they let Trix have it? I assume they're going to give Trix. Actually, Nien stuck around and made sure he got some of the experience, so we'll see how that translates into the lane phase. This is going to be Lucian and Afro Moo. Uh, that is the double Moo or Afro Lift, whatever you like to call it, in the top lane up against Soaz, who will be on Shivana as well, of course, in that top lane. There is that Zenith Blade catching straight away on Soaz, starting off as he means to go on. And you're seeing Nian follow Trix throughout the entire time here, just to gain the experience like you were saying. And then I'm assuming that Trix will be able to sit in his lane uh, on top of that to get some experience that he's going to be missing out. But you see right now, Fnatic, they're just pushing it quickly. They realize, all right, there's no point in leaving the lane in the middle, or in the middle of it. We should punish him for doing the same thing he did last game. Well, punishing maybe what they do. We'll see how it works out between them because there's going to be a lot of punishment for Nien here. And he's got hooked again by Yellowstar. He is going to get the help of Trix. So with that double buff, he's going to stick around a bit longer and maybe have to help Nien get a couple of levels on. And this is free reign for Sana if he wants to counter jungle right now. He knows where Trix is. He knows probably what was and wasn't taken. He knew they were at that red buff because of that ward. And they also knew that Nien Tonsa was there. So that's why they shoved the lane really quickly, having that uh, information. But he's not going to go for counter jungle this time. And, you know, I've never been 100% convinced by Aatrox, period, really? in competitive. I, I don't know. Just something about him is never really... Did you not watch World Finals? I, I, no, I'm not saying he can't be good. I've just I've never been convinced about him as a champion in competitive play. But I'm hoping Sanai can prove me wrong. There's a lot of people that have proven anyone wrong with Aatrox. He has been a uh, fantastic pick for me in, in a number of lanes, top lane and, and jungle. So far, it's, it's been... Maybe he's one of those champions he's that just got can't a, seem to play. He's got a pretty big win he's rate. Like, he's I'm like not for me. He's like, pop, well... I'd say he's very different from Poppy in terms of win rate, that's for sure. Double lifts KDA though from the last one, 904, 248 CS on Lucian. Let's see if he can do more of the same. Cyanide coming in towards that top, they're going to help out so as just keep it safe from the tower. And that tower is already taking quite a bit of a beating from Double Lift there. He got some good damage down on Twitch. So Reckless doing the exact same in the bottom lane. And this effectively is what it's becoming. And you guys playing 3.14 are probably used to seeing these 2-1-2 uh, -two lanes so far. Yeah, and it's actually having Fnatic come out ahead in it because look at the level difference. Sanai's already level 4 at this point. Trix is still level 3. 
And they tried to shove in the lane very quickly, but Trix is committing a lot of time down here. Maybe he's giving up the rest of his jungle, uh, jungle mobs and just trying to take the buffs away. Either way, starting off pretty slow so far. No big DS, uh, CS discrepancy anywhere except in the jungle. Well, we already see that the fact that obviously Trick's sticking around there has given Cyanide an edge already because he's on level four. He comes back in towards that top lane. Blue buff, red buff already worn off. This is going to come and keep Soaz ticking away. So they actually have a bit of a level discrepancy at the moment. The Fnatic guys in the top lane are slightly ahead of the bottom lane and also ahead of Double Lift and Afro Moon lane. You can see they're both only level three versus level fours. That's going to really come into play, especially when you're a caster AD carry, as both these two are. But you do see Shrix finally leaving here. He does finally hit level 4. A lot of action happening in middle. He's trying to push Peke out yet again. But I'm trying to think, where is this game going to break out next? And I, I think it's going to be around that 7 minute mark when these buffs come back up. Will Sinai try to counter jungle yet again? Will Trix allow that or will he go for counter jungling himself? Well, with Peke back in so early, it means he's going to be level 6 for Link first. We'll see whether he goes back here. He is, so he's not going to hit six first. Instead, it will be Peke who's going to return to that lane and get it on time. So, Cyanide, he's back clearing out that jungle while Trix is sticking around in this lane. Still only level four. So, we'll see whether Cyanide just hits level five, keeps that edge on him, and that's exactly what he's doing. The hook gets thrown out. This time it lands on towards the end zone. So, Reckless putting the damage down pack down there. Good field Philosopher's Bomb as well. Philosopher's, philosopher's Bomb? It's, it's a new thing. It's a new thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's funny because Lee Sin and Jarvan is actually like a double bruiser lane that does pr uh, really well against AD carry support. I, I've seen it solo queue a few times. It's really frustrating to play against because Lee Sin can just get around there and Jarvan has a clear path into anyone, but the Philosopher Bomb is not going to really help out too much this game. <laughs> it's a new skill that Riot may well be implementing sometime soon, who knows. But the Phosphorus Bomb is the word I was after, the Philo Stone. But double lift in this top lane, going to get focused on, has to use the Flash to get a Void Cyanide's knockup. But I don't let me see some action breaking out here. CLG still trying to be aggressive, but yet Trix is committing to staying down bottom. They are running this 2 1 2 kind of plan, unless uh, they plan for Afro to roam around a little bit more. But Bust will be coming up in just about a minute, and this is the real tell. What is going to happen from this point on? Because this will decide. And Afro, is he going to is he going to ward up? Is he going to try to take the blue away? No, he's going to go and try and see if he can get a kill in top Soas. That's what worked out for him last time around. He had the help of Link as well, and not going to be joining him. See if he can get back in there. So as thought about pushing the lane a little bit, instead he's happy to just back off. I think once he's hit six, there's not really going to be much pushing of Soaz on that tower. He got that burnout running up, it's leveled up quite convincingly. You can see he's just clearing out that wave. So I think COG may actually go for a little bit of a lane change here. And right now we see a lot of pink wards already invested into the side of CLG. Maybe with this lane swap coming in, they will decide to go for a dragon relatively soon with it after this next set of buffs. But Trix going to be able to clean up his red here. Be able to go to blue right after that, but Sana, like he knows when this blue is going to be up because he saw exactly where Trick started. He knew the times on this, and it looks like he's trying to go for it. But with those wards from Aphromoo, it's going to spot him coming in. Mm, the lane swap is on Cyanide coming towards the red buff. Trix has picked it up. Cyanide's a little bit too late on that one. Thought about maybe going aggressive on Trix, but Link was very close by. So we're back to standard meta right now. The two duo lanes in the bottom. We'll see how they work out. Double lift and Reckless up against. Uh, and, and Yellow Star, sorry, and Afro Moo. They are up against one another. There has been a slight CS advantage for Reckless as he's been down this bottom, and it was Double Lift that chose to change. So obviously, moving lane simply lost on that extra little bit of CS. Yeah, and right now, he does have a lot of minions with him, so the CS lead will increase just a little bit more. Look, we'll be donating over to Link, it looks like. And I want to see if Afro Moo is going to go for an engage anytime soon. He's going to have a little six shortly. And with that comes another form of CC form as Trix is already heading down here. He's not spotted by a ward, I believe. And this can be very dangerous for Fnatic. Right, it will be. We'll see whether he manages to go in. He's been pretty much spending his entire time down this bottom lane. While it's happening, the blue buff is being gifted across. There's the hook. That's going to bait them. Realize the situation. Flash is out, so he's caught in the Cataclysm. The coin's coming out from double lift. That will be a first kill for him. Yeah, great job by Trix to kind of finally make his presence known after sitting in that bottom lane the entire time. Picking up a kill. And Yellowstar just wasn't quick enough for well, him. It wasn't about being quick enough. It was just a great job by Trix to lock him down here. Sonite's being spotted yet again, trying to go for some counter jungling here. But Link, I don't think he has the damage to take him down just yet. That and that blood blow. Well, this top lane, I'm not too sure how much Nien can get involved in a fight with Soaz right now because he's got that double longsword on him. He's building up towards that brutalizer possibly early on. Reckless taking some good damage from Double Lift there. That was not a close trade at all. Double Lift on Lucian is a scary beast. And, as, and they might actually leave Soaz to go for some split pushing too, because he's going to go for a Goldwater Cutlass. He's going to go for that Blade of the Rune King, uh, as I think his first real buy. 
And with that, he yes. can out kite Nian. He can do an insane amount of damage percent wise, and he can take turret downs rel or turrets down relatively quickly. But I don't know if Fnatic want to go f back to that split push style, at least with a Shavana. Well, it seems a reckless force is going for that Trinity Force. Meanwhile, a Vampiric Scepter already picked up, which means the Bloodthirst is coming out for double lift shortly. Nian taken pretty low on his tower. There may be a target that Aatrox on Sinai thinks is a possibility, but look how far Link's got up lane. Surely could come around the backside of him. Peke has taken about half. There's the flashing ulti. Will it be enough to try and get out of it? The ulti will pop off. Cleanse is just at the right time. Misses the Dark Binded. And while Sinai burning out the flash to try and get that kill, so double flash is burned. Double summoners by Fnatic to try and get that one kill, and it backfired. And Link even tried to actually go for the kill on Xpeke under the turret. He uses ultimate, but Xpeke Flash past it uh, to go for his as well. So great job by Link to go for that escape. And he's running double GP10. He's not going for like any kills right now. He's trying to wait for the late game. You see, after we go in, catches on Solar Flare once again on Yellow Star. No flash available. Remember, Box comes out. Nothing they can do. It's another follow on kill. And it is working well for this bottom lane duo of Afro Moo and Double F with the help of tricks. And no word to spot, Yellow, or spot him coming in. Yellow Star had a pink. He had a green on if He could have warded for it. But unfortunately for him, he just put, didn't put it down in time. Tricks be in the right place at the right time. And Afro Moo, with those wards he has down, he can see if anything will happen down the bottom lane in terms of ward coverage. And that that lets Tricks know, hey, free kill bottom lane. No flash, let's get it. After a move, stuns have been certainly on point. Cyanide lingering around just to making sure they don't dive on towards Reckless, but that's not going to happen. So as I mean, in the meantime, he's continuing to push in that top lane, but Nien's going to get his farm on, that's for sure. If you keep shoving him on the tower, he's going to quite happily pick up the gold. Now, it's very hard to stop Elysian farming once he can get going like he is. He has a lot of innate damage, damage himself. Peke, he's already picking up the wraiths. This is going back to old school season two, I guess you could say, between Link and Peke. They're having to farm out the wraiths in between lanes because the junglers are just so busy. Cyanide's trying to back. He's still on a ward. I wonder if Aframu's going to take that target. I don't think so. I mean, but either way, they're wasting time. Sonnet hasn't been in the right place at the right time just yet so far throughout this uh, this game. Trick's done it twice. And Ian Tonso. He's constantly going back, taking double golems as quick as possible whenever they come up because he has 6% life steal plus his iron will. And again, Trix, look who's down bottom lane. But this time, Fnatic does have a word to spot it coming in. Not me. Keeping oh, the damage going. Enough. Phosphorus Bomb on double lift. Has to use the Lantern to pull him back there. Trey not working out. Yellowstar oh, caught out oh, again. Oh, oh, oh. Good flay this time around. But again, double lift has the call in available. Will he try and pull it on? No, he didn't have it. It's not. It's like a second away. It's taunting you, demon. God damn, I can see the icon now. <laughs> it <laughs> just too, came up. It's too bright when it's disabled. No, but Yellowstar, he's going in for it anyway. He gets the hook on Aphromoo. He could turn this one around with the Zenith Blade. Does manage to pop that shield, but Doublelift comes back in to protect his support. And, well, Doublelift with that Ignite Burn. Cyanide's coming around the backside. He's going to come back in. Is it going to be Aphromoo that he catches the target on? No. Good interruption by Trix. He may well pay the price, so doesn't manage to land the hook on Doublelift. Back off once again, the Ignite burning on the Anton, so he's going to get caught on the tower. One more hit should do it. Soas flashes out, does manage to catch him. The tower hit's going to come in. He will survive. And Soas, whoo, just knows the exact range on that one. We'll take the tower as well. Yeah, great play by Soas with all that happening over towards the bottom side of the map. He's going to pick up the turret as well, so he's going to have a nice lead in his lane. He's sitting on 2,000 gold to go back with, so that Blade of the Rune King is going to be coming very shortly. And with Nian already... I don't want to say out of the game, but being 0-2, down 30 farm, his damage isn't going to be too high as this game progresses, so he's going to be more, you know, utility. Fnatic going to try and take advantage of this situation in the bottom. They've bullied and pushed them out. They are sat ready and waiting. The hook on Aphromoo. Cyanide comes in there. He's got the damage, but Aphromoo tries to turn it around with the help of Doublelift. Can they get the knockup? Yes, they will. They get the kill. Cyanide takes the lance and backs off. Finally, Aphromoo goes down. Just like that, able to pick up a kill, able to punish CLG for being so aggressive down at this bottom side of the map. But with all this happening, middle has been really quiet. Really quiet. They're just in a farming session. Dragon that, possibly could be available. Sinai is ready and waiting for it, though. They know that Fnatic want to go for it. They've taken the top to it. Nien is up there. He's a long way away from the fight. And the thing is, I wanted to make that point because the CS isn't that different. No, oh, well, we do see blue being stolen away here. So it's even coming down from top side. And they really want to take this away from Trix. He doesn't have a smite available. This is going to be a blue and a dragon for Fnatic. They're pushing the advantage here. Peke is going to be given a gifted across this one. He will take that blue buff down. Cyanide goes back in towards the dragon, but they're not going to go for it. Instead, they're thinking tower. Soaz just around the side. He's ready and waiting. Instead, oh, they're all going back. And Yellowstar caught out of sit position. He's going to get locked up. And CLG give Doublelift yet another free kill. And the end, he's going to take the tower. So 
Actually, COG taking some good advantages. They lost the blue buff, but picking up a kill and the tower. Yeah, not, not worth. worth. Not worth anything. They might even get their own blue buff. All right, well, Fnatic's blue buff here. I expect they're trying to stop him from doing it, but Neon coming down, it's going to pretty much be a no, and he's going to have to back off. But even with all this farming that's been happening middle, Oh, he got it. Out. Oh, he got it. Peke got it. What? Peke what managed to steal that away. They're coming around the backside. So, and Nian's going to be the target. He kicks out Soaz. He's going to have ability to try and get away if he doesn't get caught by that dark binding, which he didn't. Soaz is going to continue chasing on here. Has the rage available? Will he catch on? No. That's going to be an easy escape for Nian. And in the meantime, CLG tried to go for Dragon here, but Reckless going to be able to hold them off. And even with Link, or even with no dragons being done so far, tied on turrets. Link has a huge Goldie over him, about four or 500 at this point, because these two GP10s that are taken in, he already has his themes on Holy Grail, as you do have expected with 2,000 gold to be able to buy his when he goes back. But right now, that turret getting very low. Oriano, what's it coming out? Shockwave pulled in, but it doesn't really do the damage required, and it's actually Nien that gets caught, gets hooked, actually pulled out of the pool. Thanks very much, says Nien. I'll take that and save guards away. That's just so hard to lock down a Lee Sin with this combo. I mean, you're going to need more than just those two spells alone since he has that um, safeguard to get away. But right now, they're not. They're, they're still committed to this turret because they see that double up to Africa or bottom. Yeah, they're sticking around bottom. That's going to be the last hit required. But will it be Peke that goes down, takes the lands and backs away from this one? CLG did push that bottom lane. There is a wave pushing on. I'm not too sure how low the turret is. We maybe get a look at it. But I can tell that uh, we're going to see the AD carry get in there. No, it's a good half health. So Reckless will clear that one out and save the day. 2 1 in turrets. Fnatic with the advantage this time around. And right now, CLG, I wonder if they're going to start grouping up and go for some pushes middle. If Reckless stays bottom, then he's not going to be in this fights, obviously. And CLG should have an advantage over that. Um, but he wants to get that turn down. He wants that gold. But Dragon's still available right now. 16 minutes in. Both these teams can be going for it very shortly as CLG already making their move. And we did see. XPK go back. Cyanide nearby though. He's able to get in and steal Flash. He's also up, so he could get in knocking. Of course, a bad day for CLG, but that Shockwave is not available just yet. That's what they're going to delay for this one. You can see it's already on tricks. Cataclysm used. Tries to pull the Flash out. Doesn't cater it because Cyanide just uses his jump to get away from there. Still can get in, get that Flash, and get that Dragon smited. The hook comes in onto Link. Will they focus on towards there? Soaz goes in and quickly redirects. They're going for the Dragon. Dragon will go down to Fnatic. No, it won't. He hasn't been taken out. Now he goes down. That's going to be a kill for Fnatic as well. You can see Peke comes in just the right time out for him. We'll get locked up. Double if taken low. He's going to get locked in there. Soaz comes on through. Nien taken low. He gets locked in. Lee Sin, can he escape? No, he can't. Fnatic get another kill. It's a four for two and Dragon for Fnatic. And Fnatic, they, they stalled so long or just long enough for Xpeka to get in there with that flash and ultimate coming down. And I, I, that cataclysm that, that happened, I'm, I'm not sure if I agree with that because, yeah, it zoned them out for a little bit, but they didn't get Dragon. They didn't commit for a fight off of that because they knew Link's ultimate was down. And... Just like that, Fnatic, they get an advantage. They get those four kills, they get Dragon, they get so much gold from that, and they also get a big confidence booster because this game's been pretty stale for them so far. And it's the combo they wanted. They wanted Trix's Cataclysm to stay so they could keep the ball. The ball was on his head, but he's like, why are you going in? I'm not got Shockwave yet. My <laughs> ulti is not up. And the only person he caught in it was Cyanide, who can just use his skill to just yeah. jump out of it anyway. So no one even in a flash burn. So big waste of an ulti there from Trix. Maybe the pressure of the semi-final situation. Remember, this is his first offline semi-finals that he's been in. He did come up against obviously Turk quality yesterday. It was maybe a nice break in game, but now, now he's up against the third place fanatic in the world finals of season three. Different story indeed. And the spring and summer split champions. Indeed, they are pretty much the dominant European champions, and that's something the that Gambit would love to correct at the start of season four, oh, that's for sure. They are lift. the bogey team. Double lift actually caught out of position this time. Does manage to escape the dark binding, but goes down nonetheless to Peke. Yellowstar in the meantime, he's going to get locked up by Aframu, but the damage is not really there this time around. He gets a good leash onto Aframu. He's going to walk away from this one. Look at Fnatic though, they're closing the gap. They could come around the backside of them, but they will not pursue. In the meantime though, Nian farming up that top lane, trying to catch up here, trying to get that Ravenous Hydra done, because when that happens, his damage will spike up pretty well, but it won't matter how much damage he does if CLG keep dying. Fnatic, if they keep getting this farm, if they keep getting these items, which they already have, then they're going to become too hard to deal with. I mean, look at Soaz. We, we talk about Shivana. You build like Where a the Rune King, that straight tank. Peke, oh god, he's lady ready laning. Wait, Aframu's going to get locked in position here. That's going to be a double, that's for sure. Who will he be giving across to? Cyanide, Three zero five. Just catch him off guard again with these wars. Great job by Fnatic. They're even chasing away Trix right now. And slowly, CLG are losing control of this game. They're down these five kills. They're down 5,000 gold. 
and Reckless is still just farming away. He's 40 CS ahead of Double Lift. And you mentioned earlier, you know, you might be able to like punish Double, oh, double Lift. What are you doing? About oh, to die. It shows his position. Soaz knows he's there. Soaz coming around the back. Pecking. Yellow Star coming from the front. The tower on nothing. You're not going to escape it. Dark binding in there. Double if caught out again. And this time it's Soaz that picks himself up. The easiest frag he'll get in the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but double if he's just being punished left and right down. 40 CS. Currently Fnatic winning on all fronts. And, and that except supports. Scum, no. scum by Yellow Star. But. They're controlling this. They have the ward coverage. They have an earlier Oracle. This is the first time Yellow Star has bought an Oracle before that 20 minute mark. And they're looking to take a turret here. If there's one thing Fnatic have proven, it's they know how to snowball. So has caught good solar flare as well, but quickly flayed back. Trick's getting caught out with the dark binding. So is the one that picks up the kill. Afrumu has to flash away from this one. And the tower continues to take damage. CLG, a valiant effort to try and beat Fnatic away from it. They may have saved the turret for a moment, but no, the hook, the death mark lands. Is it going to be the death sentence for Link? No, flashes out, but Nienton, so he flashes just in time that Cyanide comes in. The tower is safe, but not for long. And Xpeke, he has his ultimate available again. He hasn't had it ever since that fight over towards Blue Buff, and CLG still couldn't pull that one off. That was really, really close on after but they're going to back away. They have a lot of money to spend, and they're going to go home happy with this one. I really want to wonder, what's the next step for them? Because CLG, they, they need to ward up their own jungle. Double F has been caught twice in a row. I mean, he just gets to lane, dies. And that is the worst thing to happen to an AD carry because he's being punished in CS, he's being punished in levels. And it's almost, he's almost like a full item behind. Well, I mean, the, the, the issue is point. COG have got five kills, but four of them are on Yellow Star. So getting the support as opposed to getting a carry is not that great. So, I mean, yeah, we know he was basically punished for using that flash, avoiding it. And Trix Double F and Afro move certainly made him pay in that bottom lane. They worked there. Worked, worked it hard, I think is the safe to say, rather than what I was about to say, <laughs> to get those kills for CLG. But all across the map, it has been crumbling, and Doublelift and Afro maybe are trying to carry this one through. Doublelift maybe trying a little too hard and starting to get caught out of position. Yeah, this is something Joe and I always are always talk about. I think even you and I talk about quite a bit is when kills get stacked on one person. It's a good thing because obviously that person gets very strong, but if they die in a fight right away, or if they're not even in the fight, then it pretty much means nothing. All those kills, all that money went over to someone who can't really help in a fight. And right now, you know, with Fnatic, with that uh, Shivana, with that Aatrox, they can kill Double very quickly. And he has all the kills for his team. You know, Nian, he's gotten one. He's got a decent amount of farm, but he's not going to really do much more than just that kick. Well, the top lane seems to be the next focus. And you see them pulls continuing to land. The rest of Fnatic coming around the side. Oh, Link, do not stick around. You're going to get surrounded, son. You have to back away from this one. The rest of CLG do join him. But I think it's too late, and that Dark Binding catches on. Safeguard used to try and protect him from any more damage coming in. But Fnatic keep on driving down. Cyanide tanks that turret a little too much for my liking, and that's why he's going to back away. We do see Double If taking that bottom turret. This is CLG of old. Continue to counter push on. Can Double If drive on through while they hold off Fnatic in this top? Well, in the meantime, we do have Xpec have his ultimate available. They're going to just zone them away for this. They're going to get the turret. We do see Sanai going back. So it looks like he's going to be able to defend onto that. Oh, no, that, that turret's going down. He's going to get two turrets for free. In the meantime, the top, we've seen Orion ultimate miss. We've seen Double If continuing to drive through on towards inhibitor turrets, and that's what he's doing. Cyanide is there now, there to try and prevent him. So we'll see who's going to win out. A 1v1 versus a 4v4. Peke taking some tower hits is not ideal. And now we see Double If backing off. Can they interrupt him? I don't think so. Well, they got Soas right there with that ward, so he's going to be able to escape for the rest. But now he's just going to be running away. And Sunite was able to hold on to well, the inhibitor turret, I guess, there. At least stop the uh, rain that Doublelift was doing over towards bottom. But right now, you know, it's a 6,000 gold difference, but it's still anyone's game. It just depends if CLG can get their combo off or if they can prevent Fnatic from getting in there and getting that uh, Morgana ultimate to really work. It's going to be the dragon that Fnatic focus on. They're going to pick this one up because CLG are nowhere near and they don't even want to counter in towards a 5v5 fight. They don't even want to enter the notion of even trying such a thing. And frankly, Fnatic are in the driving seat. The question is, can they punish COG? If you remember back to the semi-finals against Royal Club, they were in a similar situation and they just left it just a little bit too long where Royal Club managed to work their way back in the game. And honestly, it was a game Fnatic should have won. The Royal turned around. Can COG do a similar thing and maybe hold off on towards these inhibitor turrets? We're going to find out very shortly if Fnatic can close this one out relatively soon. They're still going for that push on that bottom turret. It's not healthy at all. And Nian, well, all of CLG, they gotta be careful. If that Dark Binding lands, you might see Fnatic just commit for that fight. 
like an ion cannon coming through the uh, wall there, honestly. If it lands, you know you're in trouble. The turret, though, just going to get poked on down. Link gets caught out. Ultimate being used by So as they do catch on. That's going to be Cyanide diving in. Good shockwave pulls back Cyanide. Trick so meanwhile, with that Cataclysm does keep the rest of Fnatic at bay. Double if trying to snipe down, but unfortunately, the blood well available for Cyanide will not give him the kill. The culling's not going to land. You can't turn the distance around there. It was a one for one trade with a tower oh, for Fnatic. In. The flash ultimate comes in. Who's he going to focus on? Afrimu will get caught. He goes down. The end caught out as well. That's a double kill for Peke. And a third one comes in as well for Soaz taking down Nian. That is disaster for CLG. And surely will it be in him? In, in him to it. That's the one I'm after. It will be that first one. It will be that one. But yeah, they, they should have the manpower to go for it. But instead, they're taking away blue. They're going to take this, go back with the money, and just uh, buy up. But Expecta, he had to ultimate up the entire fight, even before he went for that engage right there. And he just waited. He bided his time. He let them get close. And the multitasking he pulled off, pick up two kills right there, was a fantastic job by him. Finishes his own his hourglass. Even had in a nasty large rod. Right now, Fnatic are at the point where they're going to be an item ahead of their opponents. You can you see that reflected in pretty much every single member of Fnatic. Except maybe so as he's building a couple different pieces. And Baron, it's becoming more and more like a likely possibility. Well, it's a 10,000, well, 9,000 difference between the uh, two teams. Five on three in terms of turrets, but still yet to break that deadlock and get in towards the base. 16-6, the kills. You can see 25 minutes gone. Game one was, what, 24 minutes long. Game two, around about 32 minutes. And currently, this looks like it may be the longest one so far. CLG, don't rule them out just yet. You just saw with a good shockwave, followed by a cataclysm, can find the right target, maybe backed up by the cooling. It could do a lot of damage. It's a good combo. It could work but CLG really at this moment have to land the perfect combo to try and beat Fnatic back because in terms of gold in terms of items it is a giant gap for Fnatic. I want to believe that if they can survive the combo of Morgana then they can win these fights. They can survive that initial burst that she can't do. They may be missing on quite a bit of damage. It'd be one chip that pretty much does nothing for the next couple of, of seconds until cooldowns come back up. But I don't know because they need to get that black shield off of her or force it onto someone else before they can, like potentially burst him down or CC chain him down or even do that to Reckless because Ghana does have that Zonius. And we do have a Death Cap coming in on Link, so his damage on that ultimate is going to be very high. But he can't, no one's there to back him up. That's the problem, is that Double F can't really get close enough oh. to really do anything here. As you see Link just tanking binding after binding. And Aphromo, who was so crucial in their victory last game, with his engages, is being forced to use everything defensively. And they've got to be so careful. So I was just off at the side, just dying that dragon, wanting to leap in. And just like that, they just zone them out. They'll die buying in, followed by a pull, and they keep them at bay. Doublelift is actually pretty fed now. If he gets some free time to actually land the hits, he will do a lot of damage if he manages to get onto that's a single target. But that's the problem. It's a single can, yeah. target, well, and they haven't got anything to follow it up. And the thing is, he has a giant dragon in his face, and he has cyanide in his face. And he can't deal with both of them. He can't really even deal with one of them right now with that random its own being finished for Soaz and the Warrior's Mail picked up for cyanide. So he he needs to have the rest of his team help get those two down, because if that happens, he can take Morgana down. He can take Reckless down very low, but Reckless should be able to out DPS him in a straight on, a straight head-to-head -head fight. But then you have Yellowstar with his ultimate, his uh, hook, if he lands it. And yeah. right now, double he's being very aggressive Ooh. bottom lane without from him. Yeah, and just having to use that wall to escape. I was thinking, the end, you are out of position. Oh, they here. really want to kill. Oh, look at Cyanide. The ping's actually on the backside of Trix. He may well jump, use the uh, jump across the bush here. No, instead he is going to be forced back by Soa, so they didn't go for a double lift in the bottom with Afrimu. They're trying to create a situation here. They're trying to create the CLG split push, trying to drive it down that bottom, but already Reckless is there, and look around the Baron area. They're starting to get that ward coverage down, completely covering the entire area. It's a defensive security net being laid down by Fnatic. I can, I can see, or I can hear Yellowstar and Team Suit right now saying, guys, I've had this happen before. I've had double split push. <laughs> it could go very wrong. Let's take a second. Let's, let's Let's get him out of that lane. As Ooh. Reckless actually getting caught. Reckless getting locked up, but there's not much damage following through. Now it will. Double lift in there. He may get Afrimu down. Can he turn this one around? Reckless has got a lot of damage. Uses the power you're out there. Cyanide comes in. A double lift is wrecked. Oh, he look at Sade, he raises his hands up in the air with joy, like, yeah, that just happened. So they pick up those two kills, now they can push down on inhibitor turret here, and CLG... He's still happy, look, they're high-fiving each other. 
Well, they thought they wow. caught him out and they have. That's going to surely be the inhibitor to it. I don't think Trix and Nien can stop this one. Nien getting caught by the Dark Binding. Trix is having to use that shield to beat them away from this one. They just went in for that AD carry to catch up there. We're already seeing that Reckless is making his way up there. That's going to be the inhibitor going down. Surely will follow. I don't think they're going to push on through here. They will back up, but the Dark Binding on Trix. That's going to trigger the alarm bells. And Trix having to slide away from that one, the combo. Bloodwell may get popped here by Cyanide. Yes, he will. Can they follow it through? Will they catch him back up? Yes, they will. The Shockwave, but he flashes out of it. I do not believe it. Now we're going to see Peke Pommes in, kicked out by Nienton. So, double lift now coming in. Can he mop up the kills? Good Cataclysm comes out, but Soas leaps back in there. Nienton so taking low. Soas takes one for the team, and he goes down to double lift. Oh, Reckless, he wanted a little bit more. They're trying to go and pick up a kill, but in the end, Fnatic, they get the inhibitor. That is the key point. And they might... Wow, not be done just yet. I expect he's still sticking around, laying that dark binding. But CLG, this can't be their moment. Like, they they can't even rush Baron anymore because it's just too late. They don't have enough time to take it down. But they're still alive. They're still showing signs of life right now, and that's what's key. But look at the spread. 5-8, 4-0-8, 4-0-8, 4-0-7. on Fnatic's picking up kills, getting gold, getting the items they need, and that's really the big oh. difference. Once they clash, Aparamu gets locked up. He's going down. Not even going to be able to do anything to get out of that. And that is just unfortunate because he doesn't have the, or they don't have the vision control, and he's trying to create that opportunity, trying to make it so they can potentially do exactly what happened onto them to Fnatic, but they've lost control of their blue for the most part. Expect it coming again. Oh, good shockwave landing there from Link Peke, getting absolutely destroyed. Now the dragon's gone down. They're going to try and chase on towards this one. Have they got the speed, the momentum to catch on? No, because Cyanide managed to slow on Trix. Trix has not got flash available. Yes, he does. He has it, but he doesn't have Cataclysm available. I get those two confused all the time, too. <laughs> <laughs> have to say things before I look sometimes, and yeah. that's, that's the downside. But right now, I mean, CLG getting that kill next Peke. They could push a turret down. They could get some extra gold from that, but instead they back away. Gonna take their own jungle for a little bit here, as they've been struggling to do for quite a while. So they're down 19 to 8 in kills here. They're down over 10,000 in gold, so they need to find something. They, they found a little bit of a crack right there on Fnatic, picking up that one kill, but can they do it again? Can they do it multiple times and get enough cracks in Fnatic to break this this power ball they have going on. Well, we will see. It's not a wrecking ball, that's for sure. Fnatic, they are driving on through. Cyanide and Soaz clear out the opposition jungle. CLG double if once again. Lingering down that lane without too much vision. He has just the ward off to the side of him, so he knows he's safe from the blue, which is why he's going down for that extra pack. But the rest of CL Fnatic realize that, shows himself on the map. Will they go Baron? Well, they don't, they don't necessarily even need to do it. They can just bait it out. They have the vision control. They have Superman's pushing middle. They're going to be starting off here, but keep that in mind. They don't have to go for it. They can jump over this wall. All three of them can get over there on some tricks. Oh, that's what they needed. The bait comes in. Trick's not going to get out of this one. Tries to slide through. Dimashia standard ignite. And the defensive ball from Link. We've seen the great escape from Peke. Now we got the one from Tricks. And they're still continuing on the oh, side. No. <laughs> oh no, he's gonna get away! He has the Ignite! The Ignite's got him! Oh, he ran, so up, he ran away from Link, so he couldn't get the Powerball on him yet again, and it's really unfortunate, but right now Baron's still be taken. In fact, he's gonna be able to pick this one up. It looks like they're gonna be able to close this game very shortly, but Double Lift, he was pushing Ball this whole time, but Xpeke was able to back and stop it. So as not even allowing a ward to go down. And just prances on in towards the end and forced to back away from the jungle. Realizing though that the Baron was picked up on him, they would have seen that buff, they know it's gone down. Dragon though, like you say, picked up by Double Lift, trying to get anything they can. Yeah, and he tried to create an opportunity by taking that inhibitor turret down, but he just couldn't. Expect was there to get back in time and to stop him, but right now, look at the CS difference between the AD carries. I mean, that's like the biggest, well that and the mid laner is the biggest uh, differences we have going on, but it isn't even oh. about that yet. Oh wow, oh, he, he cleansed it. it. He, there was no one there, nobody else there apart from Yellowstar. They thought, he thought he was in trouble, but that's a cleanse burnout. That could be so important on this next fight. The mobility for CLG, it's its so necessary. Like you said, Clen's gone. He won't be able to get away from Morgana anymore. Double has to be able to just ride the outskirts of this fight without getting caught to be able to do enough damage. But Fnatic still mill inhibitor down. They're going to be pushing up bottom here. Expect he was able to sweep that one around. And they have to be able to survive this siege. And they're in a choke point if Fnatic wants to go in for this. So Link could get a nice ultimate off. They could get a nice Cataclysm, nice Leona ultimate. But it's going to be very difficult to do that when Fnatic can just jump in with multiple people. Well, so as is forcing those super minions to go through that mid lane. Double lift is trying to clear them off a little bit. But the rest of Fnatic swinging and a miss from both <laughs> Yellow Star and Peke trying to land anything to prevent and start that fight. And put that tower already down to half hit points. And 
Fnatic, they only need a couple of seconds to start beating it down. Look at Soaz, he's waiting to jump, pounce onto Double If just off the side there. Comes back in. Double If, I'm not too sure who oh, went no. out there. Joel, but instead, it's CLG that go aggressive. He's going to be tricks trying to work away from this one. Reckless will shred his armor down. That shield will not be enough. And now they're in a four on five defensive situation. This will be another inhibitor turret going down. In him, surely will follow. Oh, expect he flashed in. Flashed in. Will the ultimate get popped? The end gets caught out there. The box is thrown out. That's going to be Nen going down. Link gets just melted down there. Double lift on the fountain. Will they dive on towards him? He's the last man standing. It doesn't matter. The Nexus turrets will be the focus once they can get the inhibitor down. This should surely be the game for Fnatic. 2-1 will be the score in the Intel Extreme Maps, the semi-finals here in Cologne. They will be facing Gambit in the final. It's all Europe, ladies and gentlemen, dominating the semis. And Fnatic, after that last game, it looked like something went a little wrong for them, and they fixed that problem very quickly. Double it, going in for Yellowstar here. He does get it, but for the cost of his life. And that last fire that just happened, Link, he tried to ultimate Reckless. He tried to hold him down. Just want, to, just want to stop right there for that, but it didn't matter. Expect it. He got the black shield up. He was able to keep him alive. And from that, they take that victory. Very well done by Fnatic. GG well played from both teams in chat. I can tell you it's all fair. It's all square. They are all, all happy in love and war, but it's Fnatic that come out on top. And you've got to cast your mind back to that level one engagement. In the end getting caught out by that flash hook. Great play from Fnatic. And 25-9 was the total score. I can quickly do a quick rundown. 8-0-9 was the score for Reckless at the end there. 6-6-2 for Doublelift. So I think overall Reckless may be winning, but Doublelift has proven in that last game just how good he is as well. I think everyone could agree, though, that both these AD carries are phenomenal players. They really are. They did so well in their own respects in their different games. And I'm, I'm happy that everyone else got to see that. I mean, it's been so long since IPL 5, as you see there right there. There we go. The That's the in. hug we like to see, the two AD carries. See, it's all respect, really, honestly. Good bit of trash talk. I guess, he, effectively, it's it's like the fighters. They build up the trash talk to build up the hype to get the viewers. Yeah, and, you know, you heard uh, Double talk about it earlier. Like, once something like this happens and he loses, he, he's not too cocky that he won't look back and be like, okay, I need to work on this, I need to practice. And he has that drive that not a lot of people have where he wants to be the best. I mean, he always says he is, but he definitely wants to be it. He wants to prove it to everyone, and he's going to work harder and probably come into the summer split or the Battle of the Atlantic with something different. Well... He got a pentakill at the All-Stars, so I don't think he's got go. too much to prove, honestly. He is a fantastic AD carry, but it's Fnatic that go through. 2-1 was the score. Unfortunately for North America, they only picked up one win against the European teams. That's not the best result they could have hoped for following the uh, exit that Cloud9 had. Honestly, I had this penciled in to be a Cloud9 Fnatic Finals, but it turns out it's Fnatic Gambit again, and Gambit themselves... We're probably cheering on CLG there because they do not have a good record against Fnatic. Yeah, they really, really don't. And this is what I'm looking forward to in this game. You, you said it before, you know, Fnatic, they're the reigning champions between spring and summer splits. Mm -hmm. Gambit, they have something to say about that. They have something to prove here. They want to finally beat them and show everyone else that, yeah, we're, we're still the best team or we're the best team yet again here in Europe. And it's going to be an insane set of matches because, you know, we, we heard from people and you mentioned it. Fnatic haven't been practicing. They haven't been looking that great recently. But they showed it there that they still have it when they need it. To me, though, in terms of teams that we just watched, Gambit was strong this morning. Yeah, they, I, I, they were really strong. I don't know strong. whether I should go against Gambit ever again. I, don't, I, don't I know, never not. do I that because I don't want to lose the friendship with them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll work on gaining it back. Don't worry. You we'll have to go through the belt. A bottle of vodka with Groove. We'll be all good. <laughs> <laughs> Not too sure I should be talking about that on stream, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, that's what we're gonna, probably going to happen. But yeah, the Intellectual Masters Finals in Cologne. Obviously, the Amateur Finals will be coming up after this one as well. That's in itself is going to be a fantastic game. Copenhagen Wolves versus in Ninja Pajamas. And, and I wonder if Ruckus is going to watch this game and root on his old team, because remember, he played with Copenhagen Wolves through the entire summer split when he couldn't play in LCS, I think even the spring split. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a good set of matches. We have two finals coming up here, Demon. Two finals coming up, you don't want to miss it, but something you definitely don't want to miss is the analysis that Crepo is about to give us.